everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and that you enjoyed Sean's Saturday yesterday. Today, I thought seeing as it is the 27th of December, we're getting quite close to the end of the year and it was the perfect time for me to share my best books of 2020 list. So as you can tell by the title, this is every single five star book that I read in the year and there are actually 48 of them, which means that we had a really good reading year. That does mean that it was like around about a fifth of the books that we read that were five stars um, because we... Our Goodreads goal is 240, we're currently on 235, but I think we're going to get it done by the end of the year because we're halfway through like either three or four different books. So we've had a really good reading year. A lot of them have been rereads, which might be why it's been a better reading year than normal because it's books that I've already read by myself that I've decided to read with Sean so that he can have the same experience. Um, and we've been kind of broadening our reading horizons a little bit, reading a lot more books in series, which is something that I often struggle to do. So without further ado, I will take you through it. Um, I'm not going to talk about every single book on the list because there are a heck of a lot of them. Um, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit kind of about the series, if there are books in the series, and I'll just kind of give you the title and the author's name, um, pop the cover up, and then you can look into it if you're, it's something that you're interested in. So the first couple of books I'd like to talk about are middle grade standalones. Um, so the first five star book that we read out of that category was Wonder by RJ Palacio. Um, this is about a boy who has a facial abnormality and is going to school for the first time and he has to learn to deal with bullying and kind of being the centre of attention for something that he can't control. Um, this is one of the only two books that made me cry this year, so this one had to be a five star. Another middle grade standalone that we gave five stars to was Wonderscape by Jennifer Bell. Um, this was the first of Jennifer Bell's books that we read and we loved it. Um, kids have to go into like an alternate reality to try and get like they they like slip into an alternate reality they're playing like this video game over there but they have to like win the game to get home it reminded sean of jumanji which i've never seen it reminded me of ready player one which i enjoy <laughs> so that was another great read um right at the beginning of the year one that i can hardly remember anything about was american panda by gloria chow this is a ya standalone about a girl going to school like co moving away to college and the shift that she goes through as she kind of becomes her own person and moves away from being the girl that her parents want her to be um i've heard that if you in <laughs> if you enjoyed love boat taipei you will enjoy this one i did not enjoy love boat taipei but i loved american panda another standalone that i gave five stars to was the poet x by elizabeth acevedo this is elizabeth acevedo's debut novel it's written in verse and it's wonderful and I also gave five stars to Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, which is her release from this year, again, written in verse. Then we have two books that I read for the YA Book Prize shortlist, and that was The Places I've Cried in Public by Holly Bourne. This was a reread. I gave it five stars both times. And The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta, which is one of my favourite books of the year so far. Um, probably of the year now, because we're so close to the end of it. Um, but this is about a boy who goes to university and decides to start a drag act. And it's written in verse. It's a super quick read and it's amazing. I adore it. Another UK way of standalone, which I'm hoping might get shortlisted for the Way Book Prize next year, is First Day of My Life by Lisa Williamson. A huge thank you to David Fixing Books for sending me through a signed proof of this one. Um, I should talk about this book more because it's brilliant. Um, a girl is really surprised when her best friend kidnaps a baby and runs away to Swindon, which is where I live, so of course I have like an affinity to this book. Um, and she enlists the help of her ex-boyfriend to drive across country and return, like go and fetch her friend and try to get to the bottom of why she's got this random baby with her. We also have The Million Pieces of Nina Gill by Emma Smith Barton. Um, this is about a girl who is grieving her brother. He has gone missing and she has to come to terms with his loss um there's a lot about like the way that your parents culture can contradict with your culture if they were raised in one culture and you've been raised in another um so there's a very interesting exploration of those themes um, and also like there's just something about the setting in this one that's really vibrant i really really love this story and i'm looking forward to reading more of emma smith arson's work so another way I stand alone that I gave five stars to this year was Not If I See You First by Eric Lindstrom. Um, this is a book about a girl who is legally blind and she loves running and she runs despite the fact that people judge her for it and worry about her because of her lack of vision. And I think it's a really empowering story. Um, I really loved it. I'd never read any of Eric Lindstrom's other books but I'm looking forward to reading whatever the pink one is. I've got it behind me. 
I can't see it now. I have a pink one. A tragic kind of wonderful. It's been moved because my daughter was playing with it. But I'm looking forward to reading that one as well and seeing if I enjoy that one as much. Another five star YA standalone is Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi. This is Mary H.K. Choi's second novel. I gave her first novel, which was Emergency Contact, five stars last year. Um, I definitely think she's becoming a favourite author of mine. I'm looking forward to reading Yolk. Um, this is about a boy who is really surprised when one of the most famous superstars in the world walks into his bodega where he's working late at night and they strike up an unlikely friendship and it develops into a relationship and you see how that works like if you've got somebody who's ridiculously famous as someone who's just an everyday guy off the street like whether that relationship can work or not another five star read and another reread was rise of the governor by robert kirkman this is the first book in a novelization of the walking dead universe and the last standalone book that I gave five stars to this year was The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Uh, this is an adult novel, um, the only adult novel on this list really, oh, on the like standalone bits, there are some adult novels later on. Um, and this is about a lady called Nora who is suffering with depression, um, she decides to end her life and it follows the story of what happens next. Um, it, this is a very very powerful one, I nearly cried during this one but it wasn't the other one that made me cry, we still got to get to that. Um, but this is one of those books that if you're in a bad place and you don't feel able to talk to people about it, this feels like having a conversation with someone in a book. Um, you explore so many different aspects of depression, so many different aspects of feeling down, so many different ways that life can go and the way that we just kind of need to be grateful for what we have rather than what we could have had. And I think that's a great moral, especially in a year like this one where everything has turned out so far from what we would have all expected when it hit midnight on New Year's Day. <laughs> so now I guess it's time to move on to the series because I've already managed to blast my way through the standalones that we read this year. Um, so I'm going to start with the most obvious one because I love these so much and this is also middle grade still so we'll still do it that I'll talk about middle grade and then YA and then adult. Um, so a middle grade series I've been absolutely loving this year is the Murder Most and Ladylike series by Robin Stevens. So out of the books in this series, the ones I've given five stars to this year are Murder Most and Ladylike, Arsenic for Tea, First Class Murder, Jolly Foul Play, Mistletoe and Murder, Cream Buns and Crime, the Case of the Missing Treasure, Death in the Spotlight, The Case of the Drowned Pal. Um, I've also read Top Mark's Murder and Jolly, no, not Jolly Foul Play, Spoonful of Murder, um, but those ones are like four stars, they're like edging their way up, but they're not quite four and a half stars, so I've bopped them down in the four star section. Um, but other than The Case of the Drowned Pearl and Death in the Spotlight, those were all rereads for me, so I was expecting to love them, and I knew I would love them, and I've been enjoying revisiting these stories, and really having fun with these characters again and meanwhile the case of the drone pearl was a little world book day short story came out at the beginning of the year a nice little fun one and death in the spotlight has actually become my favorite book in the whole series so far um, i only have death set sail left which is the last book in the series until once upon a crime which is a short story collection releases next summer um, but Death in the Spotlight catapulted itself to the top of my favourites list because this follows Daisy and Hazel as they go to London and they start acting in like a theatre troupe and they're doing a Shakespeare play and it is just delightful. Um, I love, love theatre and acting and seeing these characters in a setting like that was just a lot of fun. Another part of a middle grade series that I gave five stars to was A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. This is the first book in the Widdishing Sisters A Pinch of Magic series. I was really, really close to giving a sprinkle of sorcery four stars and I've got a feeling that A Tangle of Spells when it is released in February will probably end up being a five star or a four star. Like, it's going to be up there because these books are brilliant. Um, but we follow the three Widdishing Sisters and in A Pinch of Magic they discover that they have a family curse and they have to try to break the curse and save their lives. So it's like a traditional quest novel. Um, there's like really high stakes and it's just got all the magic and whimsy that you'd expect in middle grade and I love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> the next middle grade book which is part of a series that I rated five stars was Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. This is the first book in the Morrigan Crow series. We follow a cursed child called Morrigan Crow as she discovers the world of Nevermore and um, she has to partake in some trials to try and become part of the Wonder Society. I loved this book. I had a feeling I'd rated Wondersmith which is the sequel five stars as well or I thought it was like four and a half stars I thought I'd bumped up to five but actually it was only a four star so I'm looking forward to carrying on with this series I know the the third book in the series which is Hollow Pox came out in October and Jessica Townsend is currently writing books four 
and five and book six is also in the pipeline like there's gonna be quite a few books in the series and i'm looking forward to carrying on with them and seeing what else morgan crow gets up to so now we'll move on to the ya series that i rated highly this year and we'll start off with one of my favorite ones actually um which is maggie steve barter um so we have the dream piece blue lily lily blue and call down the hawk um so the dream piece and blue lily lily blue are books two and three in the raven cycle are the raven quartet i'm not quite sure what we're calling it nowadays uh the raven cycle according to the front of the book um wasn't a huge fan of the first one took me a long time to get through it and i wasn't a huge fan of how it ended but i loved the two middle installments and i absolutely love the first book in the dreamer trilogy which is the spin-off series that follows two of the main characters from the first series um i'm so looking forward to mystery impossible it was one of my 2021 anticipated releases and i am gonna get my hands on it as soon as i can and read it probably straight away because this story is just so gripping completely the opposite to the raven cycle i ended up giving the battle mage by taran Mathari five stars which is the last book in the sum of the trilogy um it was a case that the first two books were four stars and i was impressed but i didn't absolutely love them and then i really loved the way that it ended um so that was a nice surprise um i'm always a bit apprehensive about finishing series in case the endings don't live up to my expectations but this one far surpassed them another ya series book that i gave five stars to was a good girl's guide to murder i also read this as part of the ya book prize shortlist um we follow a girl called pip and she is investigating a closed murder case from her hometown and um, because she doesn't believe that the person that the police said did the crime actually did it um this is a really interesting one because it's told in multiple ways so you've got um pip's production log entries because she's doing this investigation as part of her extended project qualification um and then you've also got like the normal narrative like it's laced through so it's a very very quick read lots of interviews in there and um, if you're a fan of karen and mcmanus i definitely recommend holly jackson's writing a very recent five star read for us was Illuminae by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. Um, this is the first book in the Illuminae Files series. Um, I, I love it. Um, Sean beautifully describes this as an art project rather than a novel and it is true like you get so many different things going on you get like it's just beautiful and you can read it so quickly it's 600 pages but we read this in two sittings and I could have easily read it in one if I'd known how much I was going to love Katie and Ezra's story. Um, I'm looking forward to carrying on with the next two books in the series as well because I think they're going to be just as good. And I'm really kicking myself for not picking these up earlier. So another way series book that we gave five stars to was A Dark Shade of Magic by Victoria Schwab. Um, we actually gave this one four and a half stars that we bumped it up to five stars. So this is a list of like all the five stars on Goodreads rather than all the actual five stars because like there was only three four and a half stars and i didn't want to exclude them um dark shade of magic first in a trilogy um there are different londons red london grey london white london and black london and we follow kel who can jump between these worlds and we also follow a girl called lila who decides to jump through the worlds with him and have a consumed <laughs> um I really enjoyed it. It was nothing like what I was expecting it to be. I'd been intimidated by this series for years because I thought it was going to be a hard read and I thought it was going to be like extremely fancy. I thought it was more on like the high fantasy rather than like it's, it feels urban because you do get these scenes that are set in our London. Um, but I love it. And I nearly cried when I found this edition in the charity shop because I've always wanted the American editions of these. I think they are absolutely stunning. And I'd finished the book and like a week later I go to the charity shop and I find this for a pound. Amazing. So happy. Um, and I want to get the rest of the set so they all match and they'll be all pretty. And then I'll eventually finish the series, hopefully in 2021. I'm not actually sure whether this counts as YA or adult anymore, but I did give five stars to The Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman, which is the second book in the His Dark Materials series. I just... I wasn't expecting to love The Subtle Knife as much as I did because in The Subtle Knife, whereas the first book is set in Lyra's world, The Subtle Knife, you meet a character called Will and he lives in our world and then he gets like this knife and he can like cut through like gaps in the universe and he can jump between universes. Similar to A Dark Shade of Magic with all the parallel Londons, there are like parallel worlds in this one as well. Um, but Will and Lyra like jump between a few different worlds and it's very jumpy all over the place and i really enjoyed it um it's definitely the best paced book out of the his dark material series yeah the first book gets a bit slow and draggy at times and i wasn't a huge fan of the way that the series ended but i did really enjoy that second installment the next part of the series that i gave five stars to was far from perfect by holly smale this is the second book in the valentine's series following a famous family of siblings um we're gonna get each of their stories in a different installment in the series as far as i'm aware 
um, but I really did enjoy this instalment. Um, it's a lot of fun, but it also talks about some more serious subject matter, and I like the combination of the two. Another book which I'm not actually sure whether it's YA or adult or middle grade is Eragon by Christopher Paolini. This is the first book in the Inheritance Cycle, also gave it five stars. Boy finds dragon egg, uh, gets vastly in trouble because bad guys want that dragon egg and he has to go on an adventure to, like with his dragon, like gonna try and save the world. Um, we've read the first three books of this series and as the series has gone on it's become more and more of a slog. Um, eventually we'll finish the last one because we're three out of four, we might as well. But the first book is definitely my favourite so far. The next YA part of the series that we rated five stars was Dear Justice by Nick Stone. This is the sequel to Dear Martin. Um, this, like, Dear Martin was a standalone until this year. Um, it's like a companion novel rather than a direct sequel. Um, and I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's one of the most necessary sequels that I've ever read. And I highly recommend if you've read Dear Martin and you enjoyed it, you'll love Dear Justice even more. Now we'll move on to the adult series that I gave five stars to and of course we can start this off with my fave which is Cursed Brown. Um, so I rated five stars to Golden Sun, I rated five stars to Morningstar and I rated five stars to Iron Gold. Uh, Golden Sun and Morningstar are rereads, Morningstar was the other book which made me cry this year and I cried the first time I read it so I was like I'm not gonna get emotional at the end but I did and it it was sad. Um, but Iron Gold I was like pleasantly surprised with. I started this one years ago, as you can see I didn't get very far in. Um, got too scared to read it because I didn't want bad things to happen to my faves. And then I ended up giving it five stars and loved it. Um, looking forward to carrying on with book six when it comes out. Didn't love book five, but we won't talk about that here. The next adult book in a series that we gave five stars to was House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. This is the first book in the Crescent City series, which is Sarah's first adult officially adult series um it's like an urban fantasy there's a girl she is investigating a crime she has some feelings for an angel and it's brilliant like i thought there was going to be i thought this was going to be pretty much like 50 percent sex and i was going to get really bored and i wasn't going to enjoy it there's actually no sex in this book at all so the fact that people say that sarah j mass is like just like smutty she's not um give her a chance don't just write it off because it's sarah j mass don't just write it off because you've heard people say that it's like mostly sex scenes and things because this is like a really really solid crime thriller um with supernatural fantasy aspects and i love thrillers and i like supernatural fantasy aspects so this is a great combination for me the next adult series that i gave five stars to was foundryside and shawfall by robert jackson bennett uh shawfall was another book that was four and a half stars we bounced it up to five because it isn't quite as good as foundryside but it is so good that you can't rate it a four star like there's no way it's a four star but it is not quite as good as foundryside i kind of want to give foundryside six stars and shawfall five stars um robert jackson bennett's writing reminds me so much of pierce brown um he's got that same dry humor he's got the like wit and the sarcasm laced throughout it and you all know by now if you don't know by now what are you doing here that pierce brown is my favorite author and i think if i read robert jackson bennett's other series and it has that same style of writing he's going to be catapulted up there as well um unfortunately the third book in the founders trilogy has not been announced yet i have no idea when it's coming but I will be rereading these ones before we carry on with the third book because I loved them. I absolutely love them. The, the magic is interesting. The characters are interesting. The writing is just amazing. Definitely one of my top series of this year. And the last adult series that I gave five stars to this year is the Eye of the World series by Robert Jordan. Um, so I gave the Eye of the World four and a half stars, bounced up to five. As I said, there was three of them. That is the three. Um... The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan and The Dragon Reborn by Robert Jordan. Um, both five stars. Um, much better than the first book in the series. The first book establishes a lot. You're getting introduced to a lot of the characters. There's lots of like roaming around. But it's still written really well. It's still very captivating and I still felt very engaged. Um, a lot of people say that it's basically a Lord of the Rings ripoff, but I found myself bored through basically the entirety of the Lord of the Rings. So if you've read that book and you didn't enjoy it, this is probably the series I would recommend kind of shifting over towards. Um, the Great Hunt is good. Um, you're, they're looking for a horn. It, it's a hunt. Um, it's very kind of focused on that and I think that propelled the pace of the storyline so quickly 
um, which was grand. And also, like, I'm not a huge fan of the main character, Rand, and the Dragon Reborn only features, like, three chapters about Rand because he, like, goes for a wander and just disappears. And then everyone is like, oh, where's Rand? Oh, we don't care. We're going to do our own adventures and our own stuff. And that's why this one is my favourite out of the three. <laughs> Other than those books, I also read one classic which I gave five stars this year, which was The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, um, which is a short story about a woman kind of losing, like, kind of losing her mind, but not losing her mind. Like, read it, it you'll understand. It's very, like, there's lots of layers to that one. Um, and two non-fiction books, which are Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson and What Have I Done by Laura Dockrill. Uh, Furiously Happy is about a lady who is using humour as a coping mechanism to get past kind of her depression and her mental illness um whereas what have i done is about a author who experienced postpartum depression and had like an absolute breakdown when she had her son and about like the way that parenthood and becoming a mother can affect people differently and as a mother myself i find that one really really fascinating like that one nearly had me in tears and i was up until like five in the morning reading it so don't start that one just before bed because you won't be able to just read a chapter you'll just want to read the whole thing in one go and those are all of the books that we gave five stars to this year. Um, I'm proud of how many we've read and how many have been five stars. And I'm looking forward to next year because I feel like I'm getting to know my reading tastes a lot better. Like I've always been somebody who thought I was scared of big books, thought I was scared of fantasy, thought I was scared of continuing on with series. And as you can tell, most of these are series continuations and most of these are fantasy so and a lot of them are big chunky boys like look at these these are chunky boys and they were five stars they were worth the time and the effort um so i think it's gonna get to the stage where my reading is gonna shift more towards those things um so we'll see if 2021 is as successful or whether it all just goes down the pan because i've had too good of a year in 2020 um thank you for watching i have already done a video where i talk about my five best books of the year so if you want to know which ones i really loved out of these um which ones are like the creme de la creme i will post that in the description um so go and check that out as well i'm trying not to pick a favorite because i love them all and this isn't meant to be a video like that. This isn't meant to be like picking them against lunch and none of this is just celebrating all of the amazing books I've read this year. Um, but yes, if you like this video, please like it. If you'd like to subscribe, I would be really, really grateful. And I will see you tomorrow for the worst books of 2020, which is all of the books I either DNF'd or gave a one star to. Um, so thankfully there are less of them, but there's still quite a few. See you then. Bye. Bye.